Hello, I'm James. Hopefully you've been watching the previous two clips in this series. Uh, we're now up to chemical causes and conventions. We're going to look at the cause of the electromotive force, the convention of the voltmeter, and ask what does the sign of the electrochemical cell tell about the redox behaviour of the half cells. So looking at the cause of the electromotive force, why does linking two half cells cause a voltage? Well, a more reactive metal such as zinc will have a greater tendency to lose electrons, electrons than a, a less reactive metal such as copper. So therefore some of the zinc electrode can dissolve to form Zn2 plus and push electrons around the circuit. And on the other side, the Cu2 plus ions can gain those electrons and so complete the circuit. And this flow of electrons uh, is a current and so could power a light or something like this. We need to be a little bit careful about voltage or EMF in that a voltmeter doesn't actually allow a current to flow but just measures the relative buildup of charge from each cell. Convention of the voltmeter and uh, why does it matter which way round to plug in the voltmeter? And in these diagrams we're thinking that we've got a choice of way round we plug into the voltmeter and the battery is behaving like the electrochemical cell. So in the first picture the negative side of the battery has been linked to the negative terminal of the voltmeter and the positive to the positive. So you could say it's been wired up the right way round and so it gives a, a reading of plus 1.5 volts. However in this second picture we've turned round the voltmeter so the negative from the battery is going to the positive of the voltmeter and this means that the reading will be negative 1.5 volts. In this uh, third picture, the voltmeter is the same way around as the first diagram. Those two are the same, uh, but the battery is being swapped, so this also reads negative 1.5 volts. Remember, we don't necessarily know which way around the electrochemical cell is going to push electrons, uh, i.e. which are going to be the positive and negative terminal to the battery in this analogy, but we can choose which way around is the voltmeter. And so there are two choices. Either we can always indicate which way around the voltmeter's been set up, or we can have a convention. And the convention is that we have the negative terminal of the voltmeter on the left and the positive terminal of the voltmeter on the right. So we use this system here. We wouldn't use that system there. And then this allows us to talk about the left-hand electrode or the right-hand electrode without having to ask which way round it's been plugged into the voltmeter. And what this means is that we can interpret the sign of the voltage measured in terms of the relative positive and negative half cells. And just to clarify, convention chooses this that we uh, put the negative terminal on the left and the positive on the right, but the chemical reactivity decides this, which is the relative left, uh, relative positive and negative, relative negative terminal. And in this uh, first example here, a positive voltage has been recorded, which means that the left-hand electrode must be negative and the right must be positive. But in the second diagram, a negative voltage is recorded, which means that the left-hand electrode must be relatively positive and the right-hand relatively negative. If we return to the example of zinc and copper, the zinc electrode is relatively negative. It tends to lose electrons more than copper. So therefore, when the zinc half cell is on the left, this will give a positive voltage will be recorded. However, uh, if the zinc and the copper are swip switched, they're the other way around, then the uh, copper is now on the left-hand side. That's the positive electrode, and so we would record a negative there. So it's as though the right-hand side electrode matches up with the recorded voltage. And what this means is that we can work out which is the positive and which is the negative half cell by looking at the sign of the voltage. So just before we finish here, you might like to have a go at working out whether you would expect a positive or negative vol voltage for the following uh, three electrochemical cells. And if you understand this key principle, then you are well on the way to understanding standard electrode potentials. <laughs>